Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Mighty Father, in the holy name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this time at your feet. Father, as we come, we are asking, Lord, that you wash us in the blood, cleanse us and purify us, Father, by the power of the blood of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that at this your table, you feed us with the goodness of your mercies. You feed us with the goodness of your love. And that you allow your word, Father, to come forth with tremendous power and authority. That you cause your word to triumph over our lives. That even as your word overcomes everything else in our lives, Father, you transform us into overcomers who will dwell with you in eternity. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we have our seats, please? Hallelujah. A day is coming. That day will separate the whole of humanity into two main groups. Those who are, will be considered overcomers and those who will not be overcomers. The overcomers will dwell with God in eternity forever. The others, we shall soon see where they will be. And today, we are asking the Lord that by the power of his word, by the authority of his word, he will translate us into the realm of the overcomers. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you something before I begin. At the end of our lives on this earth, we must be overcomers. In fact, on the other side of the spiritual realm, the ultimate power, we are supposed to overcome it. And today we'll begin to look at how the Lord equips us to overcome the ultimate power of the dark side of the spiritual realm. Amen? Hallelujah. Then you can see the wisdom of our God. You can see the glory of our God. The things that human beings may not consider as essential or as important. That is what the Lord has used to give power to you and I to overcome the ultimate evil in this universe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our key scripture is from 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 26. It says this, and if you look at the ones I have highlighted, you get an idea about what you are going to talk about today. It says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. You and I know that one thing that is interesting about death, when somebody is dead, there's a finality about it. Whether you like it or not, you cannot do anything about it. Because we know that once death comes, that is it. It's finished. The person is gone forever into eternity. We may never meet the person again. But here the Bible is telling us that somebody, his name is Christ Jesus. He was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And he says that that is not the end of being raised from the dead. He says he is the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. Wow. The Bible is saying that there are some people who when they die, they are dead. And there are others when they die, they have fallen asleep. Amen? So, it is not death, but it is sleep in which they are. Hallelujah. Then you begin to see that this one is interesting. This one is interesting. So, they have been removed from the realm of death into the realm of rest. Hallelujah. Then verse 21 says, For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection from the dead. So death is not the final event. There is something after death. Amen. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. So you can see that Christ has been raised from the dead. The resurrection of the dead all be made alive. Verse 23. But each in his own order. Spiritually, 
Everything is according to order. Everything is perfect. There's no haphazard way of doing things. God is a God of order. Amen? It's amazing. Almost in everything about his universe, there is order. It says, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruit, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Even here, there is an order. We'll talk about it later. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. Hallelujah. Says, currently there are rules and authorities and powers operating in the universe of God that are challenging the power, the authority, and the rule of God. But it says, a time is coming when Christ Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who has been given all authority and all power in heaven and on earth, he will destroy all those powers. Amen? For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Amen? So now I understand why Christ Jesus will reign for a thousand years on this earth. And at the end of it, at the end of the thousand years, the Bible says that he will cast Satan into the lake of fire. Death and hell will also be cast into the lake of fire. This is what the Bible is talking about. Hallelujah. It says, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The one, the most stubborn one is death. That tells me that death is a spirit. And interestingly, death was created by God. And now through sin, death has control over the whole of mankind. But a time is coming when Christ Jesus will finish the power of death and there will be no more death. Hallelujah. 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 So, anyway, before we go on, so there is this death and there is the second death. This death is under the death, uh, under the power of the spirit of death. The second death is purely under the control of God. You know that. And, and this one, this one, will die the second death. We'll see what the Bible calls the second death. Hallelujah. So you can see that, as I said, if you look at it, there are certain things that I've highlighted. Christ raised from the dead. By Christ has come the resurrection of the dead. In Christ, we will not die, but be made alive. Christ will destroy death. So, Christ Jesus, the Savior, is the overcomer of death. Hallelujah. The ultimate goal of salvation is the destruction of death. Hallelujah. Eternal life is about overcoming death through Christ Jesus. The ultimate purpose of salvation is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Then eternity with God in heaven is all about overcoming death. If you do not overcome death, you cannot spend eternity with God. That is what we are saying. Now the question then is, how do I overcome death? We know that everyone will die. But there is, there is a secret and we'll, we'll find out shortly. Hallelujah. Who are those who overcome death through Christ Jesus? Because some people will overcome death, others will not. Hallelujah. There is a resurrection in Christ Jesus. And as, as I said, there is order. There is order. And we've asked the question, who are those who overcome death? When you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 to 17, it says, For we say this to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not go before those who are asleep. Amen? There are some people who are not dead. They are asleep. Hallelujah. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So those who are dead shall rise first. Those who have died in Christ. Then who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall ever be 
with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, there is some people called overcomers who at the rapture of the Lord, at the coming of the Lord, whether they are dead or alive, they will escape death. Did you hear that? There are some people who are called overcomers. At the rapture of the church, whether they are living or they are dead, they will escape death. They are those called overcomers. Those overcomers who are dead or who are asleep, they will get up and live forever. Those overcomers who will be living, they will be transformed, uh, they, will, they will be changed. That's what the Bible says. And they will live forever. They will never taste death. Hallelujah. In fact, this, this is overcomers. Amen? Hallelujah. This, this one is the ultimate purpose for life. At the end of your life, at the end of our lives, we want to be among these people. The alternative, the other option is unthinkable. You don't want to think about it. You don't want to consider it. You don't. We shall see. So why is there the need to be overcomers? Or how important is it to be overcomers? Why should we strive? Why should we live our lives in such a way that at the rapture or at the coming of the Lord, we will be considered as overcomers? Who are the overcomers? How do they become overcomers? What is the characteristics of the overcomers? And when is one judged to be an overcomer? These are some of the questions that we will try to answer. We will not finish today and God willing, we will continue another time. So, this is why we must be overcomers. And it is interesting, when Jesus visited the seven churches, in every instance, he talks about, in fact, he talks about overcomers. Amen? So, you can see that it is for every member of the church of Christ. He says to the church of Ephesians, he says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, and we know that the tree of life is a fruit that when you eat, you will never die. So, Jesus is telling us here that if you want eternal life, it is not enough to be a Christian. It is not enough to be born again. It is not enough to call yourself a Christian. At the coming of the Lord, whether you are dead or alive, you must be found to be an overcomer. And he says, then you will be given to eat of the tree of life. So if you are not overcomer, you will not be given this fruit of the tree of life. Wow. Which means that you will taste the second death. This one tells us what the second death is. This line. To the church in Smyrna, it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. So if you are a Christian, if you are, if you are part of the church, this is what the Spirit is saying to us. If you do not overcome, you will be hurt by the second death. But if you overcome, you will not be hurt by the second death. Now, what, what is the second death? We go to the scriptures and the scriptures tell us. Revelations 21.8 and Revelations 20.14. It says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars will have their part in the lake burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you see why we are saying that it is not enough to be a Christian. It is not enough to call yourself, I am born again. It is not enough to speak in tongues. It is not enough to, to, to even preach. It is not enough to worship. It is not enough to do the work of God, to be an evangelist. The most important thing is that, are you an overcomer? It says, Revelation 2014 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And you see why I was saying that death himself will die. Death himself 
eh, will be subject to the second death. Wow. Then the lake of fire must be very, very terrible. It must be very terrible. It must be very terrible. And the, the Bible is telling us that if we do not overcome, then we will be hurt by the second death. What does he mean to overcome? What does he mean to overcome? To the church in Pergamon, Pergamon, it says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is what the Holy Spirit is saying to you and I. He says this, he says, to him who overcomes, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give to him a white stone, and in the stone, a new name written. Wow, look at it. It says, in the stone. A stone, inside the stone is a name written. Wow. Which no man knows except he who receives it. Wow. This one, it is a hidden mystery. Only the Lord knows what the hidden manner is. Only the Lord knows that stone. And only the Lord knows what name is in that stone. But it says that we must overcome to receive the hidden manner and that uh, wise stone. Amen. Then, to the church in Thyatira, it says, but that which you have, but that which you have, hold fast until I come. Which means that if you do not hold fast what we have, somebody will overcome us. Hallelujah. We have been made overcomers, but we are not overcomers until the day of the rapture, until the point of the rapture. And it says, he who overcomes and keeps my works to the end. Did you hear that? To him, I will give power over the nations. Wow. No wonder only a few will be saved. The overcomers will be the rulers of the nations of this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, they will be giving power to rule over the nations and giving the morning star. It says, it says I will give him the morning star. Then you can begin to see that there is something that is prepared for these overcomers. And in life, we must aim to be among these overcomers. Hallelujah. The morning star. Christ Jesus is the bright morning star. And he says, I'll give him the morning star. I don't know what the morning star is. But can you imagine all that he has been talking about? The, uh, the fruit of the tree of life. The morning star, the hidden manna, the white stone. Wow. Hmm. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, Lord, I want, I want to be in the number. When, when the saints, saints go marching in, when overcomers go, go marching in, I want to be among the number. Hallelujah. It says, to the church in Sardis, the one who overcomes, this one will be, what? Clothed in white clothing. And I will not, wow, did you hear that? I will not blot his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So there are some overcomers who will not be overcomers at the end. May God have mercy on us. You can see that those who are clothed in white, those who are overcomers will be clothed in white. And you can see that then you look at Revelation 19, 6 to 9, then you know that they are the ones that are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Their names are kept in the book of life. And their names are called and mentioned before the Father and the, before the angels. Wow. They will be recognized in heaven as belonging to the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so it's not everyone who is a child of God. Only the overcomers are the children of God. Ultimately. May the Lord help us that we will be overcomers also. Amen. To the church in Philadelphia, it says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to that which you have, so that no one may take your crown. You are not in until you are in. Jesus is saying that if you do not hold fast 
to what we have, somebody can take our crown. Wow. This spiritual life is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. It says, him who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he will go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God. The new Jerusalem. Which comes down out of heaven from my God. And my new name. Wow. He will dwell in the presence of God forever. He will be recognized before the Lord forever. A pillar in the temple of God. Wow. 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 I want to be among them. I want to be among the number. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the church in Laodicea, he says, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. And this one, in fact, if you read about the throne of God, it is amazing. He says, at times, he says that in the throne is the lamp of God. God is seated on the throne, but the lamp of God is also seated on the throne. Then he says, at times he says that the four living creatures who are around the throne. At times he says that somebody came out of the throne. Wow. The throne of God is not an ordinary throne. Amen. But Jesus is saying that, he says that you sit with me in my throne. In my throne. Not on my throne. In my throne. Wow. Wow. Even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. Wow. He says, you reign with me in eternity over this universe. These overcomers, they must be special. They will reign with Christ. Wow. Who? May the Lord have mercy on us. Father, have mercy upon me. So you can see that we must be among those. It is important that we become overcome. In fact, if you are not overcomer, forget heaven. Forget eternal life. But if you are an overcomer, you have eternal life in the paradise of God. You will not, what, be hurt by the lake of fire, the second death. You will be given to eat the hidden manna. Wow. And you have the white stone with a new name written. In fact, this one is a mistake. It's in it, in the white stone. Hallelujah. You will be given power to rule over the nations and you will be given the morning star. Oh, yeah. You will be clothed in white clothing and your name will not be blotted out of the book of life. You will be made a pillar in the temple of God with the name of God and Christ written on you. And you will be granted to sit with Christ Jesus on his throne. Hallelujah. Who wants to be an overcomer? Lord, have mercy upon us and help us. Amen. Please, Holy Spirit, help us. Amen. So what are the characteristics of those who are overcomers? If you look at that, which I think it was the saddest. It says, the one who overcomes, this one will be clothed in white clothing. So only the overcomers have their names not blotted out of the book of life. So this is what happens. When you become a Christian, your name is written in the book of life. Then you are given the chance to prove yourself as an overcomer or as a loser. If you are an overcomer, your name is kept in the book of life. If you are not an overcomer, your name is blotted out of the book. And if your name is blotted out of the book, it means that though you became a Christian, you spend eternity in the lake of fire. People, we cannot joke with our Christianity anymore. We cannot. We cannot. We cannot. And as we said, names of those who do not overcome are blotted out of the book of life. Their names were in the book to start with, but they were blotted out. Oh, may God have mercy on us. You can see that Christianity is not just a matter of coming to church on Sunday. It's not a matter of preaching here. It's not a matter of singing in the worship. It's not a matter of evangelism. You can do all those things but if you are not an overcomer, it's useless. So let's see how death entered. The power of death. Then we'll see the power that overcomes this death. Then it will make sense. It will make sense. 
Genesis 1.26. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then we all know what happened. God gave them instructions. Not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he told them that the day they eat it, they will die. Now let's fast forward a little bit and see what happened. The, the Bible says that the serpent came to entice the woman and to tell him, to tell her that no, what God said is not true. You will surely not die. But it will make you wise. You know good and evil. In fact, it will make you like God. And the Bible says here that so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of his fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Wow. At times I sit there and say, what if Adam and Eve had not eaten the fruit? But it is too late. It's too late. Forever. Can you imagine the billions of people who are going to hell because of this? Billions of people. And we do not even know what fruit it is. We did not chop some. Look at the hardship, the difficulties of this earth because of this. Then we know that there is something that we must be very careful about. If we can do such evil, then we must be very careful about it. How death came. How death entered. It says, verse 7, Genesis 3, 7, it says, Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. They knew that they were naked. So you can see that sin has removed or stripped them of their clothing, of their garment. And then we will understand that this image of God and the likeness of God was what was covering them. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. Why do I say that this image and likeness of God was the clothing that covered them? We'll have to have scripture for that. We'll get to that. But the key thing is that the moment they sinned, they became naked. Now somebody is understanding why the Lord is saying that your name can be in the book of life, but it can be blotted out. We'll see the importance of these garments later on. Maybe not today. But without the garment, if you are naked, you cannot dwell with God. And the Bible says that sin makes us naked even to ourselves spiritually. Remember, it was only one sin. Only one. Only one. Only one. Only one. Only one sin is taking billions of human beings into the lake of fire forever. One sin. So please, may the Lord help us that we will hate sin in our hearts. Amen. I hope someone is getting the message. It is evil. That thing called sin is evil. It is never a pleasure. It is never fun. It is never enjoyment. It is not, never cool. It is not. It is not. It is wicked. It's evil. It's evil. And it takes effect instantly. And look at its effect. It is universal. And it is eternal. That is the effect of sin. That is how wicked and evil sin is. So one of the things that we, as we prepare, even, then you can see who the overcomers are. Now you know, isn't it? Even before we get there, you know the overcomers. Because they have overcome death. And we know, we will see shortly some of the things that sin does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.